Welcome! In this video, we will go over basic computer applications that will help you complete your assignments. Some of the functions of this video include pause, play, and rewind. You can turn the captions and table of contents on or off by clicking on the CC or closed captioning button or the button that looks like a piece of paper. Microsoft Office is a suite of software that helps you create documents that include essays, presentations, charts, flyers, and more. The two programs that we will discuss here are Microsoft Word and Microsoft PowerPoint. What is Microsoft Word? Microsoft Word lets you create documents like essays. This is one of the most important applications you will use in your education. In order to create a document, go to the Start menu and open Microsoft Word. If you do not see it immediately on the Start menu, go to Programs, Microsoft Office, and then Microsoft Word. As soon as you create the document, name it. To do that, go to File, Save As, give your file a name, choose a location where you would like to save it, and click on Save. From now on, you can just click on the Save button at the top of the page. Make sure you save often to avoid losing work. To change the style of the letters, known as a font, go to the top of the page. To change it, select the font style you want. Many times instructors ask that your paper be in Times New Roman font. You can also change the size of the font. To do that, go to the top of the page where you see the number 11. Click on that and choose the size. The most common font size is 12. It is best to change these settings before you begin to type. If you want to change the font style and or size within your document, Highlight the section you want to change and change it. Many assignments also require that the margins, or edges of the document, be one inch around. To change the margins, click on the Page Layout tab. Click on Margins and select the option that shows one inch all around. Microsoft Word has a built-in dictionary that lets you know when a word is misspelled or if it's grammatically incorrect. Words that are misspelled are underlined in red. Words or sentences that have grammatical errors are underlined in green. In this example, you can see the misspelled word underlined in red. To correct it, you can right-click on the word and pick the correct word from the list. You will do the same for the grammatical errors. Remember, software programs are not perfect. Always ask a friend and or a school peer to read your papers for you. You can also create lists by using bullets, which can be numbers, letters, or symbols. To create a list, start by choosing a bullet style. From the Home tab, go to the section with the bullets. The first section is for symbols. The second section is for numbers, and the third section lets you choose from bullet templates. In this example, I will choose a number to create a numbered list. Once you choose a style, click on it to begin the list. An indented number 1 will show up. Type what you want to say and hit enter or return to make a number 2. If you want to make a sub bullet, hit return or enter and then hit the tab button on your keyboard, which is on the left side to create a bullet related to the first one. To get back to the numbered bullet, hit return twice. Keeping your files organized is important. You will have a much easier time finding them when you need them. A good way to organize is to create a folder. You can name your folders anything you'd like. You can name it English Class 2012, Math 105, etc. To create a folder, go to the area where you want to create your folder. This could be on the computer desktop, in the Documents folder, etc. To access the Documents folder, go to Start and click on Documents. Older computers might say My Documents. In this example, we will create a folder in the Documents folder. There are two ways doing it here. At the top of the page, click on New Folder. A new folder will appear. 
name the folder. You can also right click on your mouse and a menu will appear. Go to New, then Folder, and name your new folder. Now when you type a paper, you can go to File, Save As, go to the Documents section, and find the folder you just created. You can also create a folder on your computer desktop, which is the main section on your computer screen for easier access. To do that, right-click anywhere on the screen, go to New, and then Folder. A new folder will appear. Go ahead and name it. This will be named Emeritus Classes. If you decide to change the folder name, right-click on the folder and click on Rename. Type in the new name of your folder. You can change the placement of folders to organize them. To do that, click and hold down the left side of your mouse and move it. Keep folders in any order you want. You can also create a folder within a folder. For example, let's say I wanted to create a folder for each semester. Double click on the folder to open it. Click on New Folder at the top and then name your folder. Click on New Folder again to create another folder. Go ahead and name the folder. You can create folders almost anywhere on your computer. Choose locations that are easy for you to remember. Good locations for assignments are Documents and Desktop. For images, save them to Pictures. Let's save this document in a folder we created. Go to File save as and select the location where you want to save it. We will save this document to the folder we created on the desktop. Click on Desktop. Look for the folder we created titled Emeritus Classes. Pick the folder where you will save this document. Let's save it in English 101. Make sure you name your file. This one is titled Paper 1. Once you name it, click on Save. If you go back to the Emeritus Classes folder on the desktop, you will see the document Paper 1 in the English 101 folder. Microsoft PowerPoint is a program that lets you create slideshow presentations, from simple to elaborate. You can add images, sound, videos, and more. To open PowerPoint, go to Start, Programs, Microsoft Office, and PowerPoint. To create a presentation, first choose your design. To choose a design, click on the Design tab and roll your mouse over the different designs until you find one you like and select it. To add a new slide, go back to the Home tab. Click on the arrow that says New Slide and choose the type of slide you want. For example, if you want to compare two things, use a comparison slide. To add an image, click on the Insert tab at the top. You can add images saved on your computer, general art that is available in PowerPoint, also known as clip art, and a screenshot of an image. In this example, we will add an image saved on the computer. It is the same process to add audio and video. If you need additional assistance, click on the blue question mark help button located on the top right. A window will pop up letting you search for answers. All Microsoft Office programs have this option. Web browsers are software that you can use to access the Internet. The most popular ones are Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, and Safari, which is for Macs. Firefox is the recommended browser for Bradman students. We will use it in our examples. In Firefox, you can create favorite pages. This is a great way to save the web pages you visit often to have easy access to them. To 
create a favorite, go to the web page you want to save, such as the Leatherby Library's homepage. In the address bar, you will see a star. When you click on it, it turns yellow, indicating that it is saved as a favorite. If you click on the star again, a menu will appear. From here, you can add your favorite bookmark to the bookmarks toolbar. A link to your page will appear at the top of the page for easy access. You can improve searches by using Boolean operators. What are they? They are connectors that help you determine the relationship between words. The three operators are AND, OR, and NOT. AND will help you narrow down your results. For example, let's say you wanted information about the effects of sleep deprivation on memory. You want to find information that contains all of these words. You would type sleep and memory. Keep in mind that Google automatically adds the AND in between words when you conduct a search. OR will help you broaden your search. Here's another example. Let's say you wanted to find information about cats. There are many ways of referring to a cat, and you want to find all the information that is available. In your search, you would type cats or felines. That way, it will find all of the information about cats and all of the information about felines. You have increased your search results. If you want a search to omit certain words, use the NOT operator. For example, Let's say you wanted information about smartphones, but you did not want to find information about iPhones. In your search, you would write, Smartphones, not iPhones. Now it will search for smartphones and it will leave out any web pages that mention iPhone. You have narrowed your results. These operators are also available in the library's databases. You can also search for information in specific types of websites. For example, if you want to find information about mortality rates in government websites only, you can type this into the search box. Site colon gov mortality rates. It will only find websites that have the .gov ending or government websites. Here are some other popular examples. Site colon edu or education. Colleges and universities will have this on their website. Site colon org, mainly nonprofit and non commercial websites. Organizations like the Red Cross will have this. Site colon net, mainly meant for technology service providers, but is also used as an alternative to dot com websites. You can also use the advanced search feature. To get to it, search for something in the general search box. When you get to the results page, go to the right and click on the wheel for options and select advanced search. Advanced search will let you search by language, number range, and more. You can also apply the Boolean search techniques we discussed earlier in this video in the advanced search. Google Scholar found at scholar.google.com, it's a great place to find scholarly articles. You can use the same search techniques mentioned in the basic Google section to find articles in Google Scholar. In this example, I searched for articles that mention sleep and memory. Remember, you cannot limit to peer-reviewed articles in these searches like you can in the library's databases. Here are some items to look at when you see the list of results. Anytime. Select the publication times of the information you find. You can select a year or click on custom range to select dates. Where can I get this? This will help you locate the item. If we do not have what you need, you can submit an interlibrary loan request. For each article, you will find the following information. Article title, authors, publication name and year publication, abstract, related articles, and number of people that have cited this article. Remember, 
Google Scholar is just one of many places you can use to locate articles. It is highly recommended that you use the library's databases in addition to Google Scholar. You can change the settings in Scholar so that it recognizes that you are affiliated with Chapman University. It connects users to the library's databases, which provide access to full text documents not freely available through the web. To change the settings, go to scholar.google.com and click on the icon that looks like a wheel or a gear that says Settings. On the left side, click on Library Links. Type in Chapman University into the search box and click on the search button. Once you see it appear, make sure it is checked off and click on Save. Now when you search and click on Where Can I Get This, it will redirect you to the library site where you can log in to access the article's full text. A great place to search for images online is through Flickr. You can search for images that you can legally use in presentations and more. Search for an image by typing in your words into the search box above. In this example, we will search for images of cats. It is recommended that you search the commons because the images there are free to use. No special permission is needed to use them. The images on the commons are intended for public use in varying degrees. Remember, you still need to cite them. Once you find an image you want to use, make sure you cite it. In this example, I will use an image of former President Clinton's cat, Socks. Take a look at the license section on the right. Here it will tell you what kind of license it has. For Creative Commons images, you will likely see no known copyright restrictions, which means you don't need to ask for special permission to use it, but you still need to cite it. Also, below the image, you will see all of your citation information. For more information about citations, please see the Leatherby Library's Citation and Style Guides found under the research section on the right side of the library homepage. Additional resources are available for help with APA and MLA citations, Blackboard, library use, and more. We have reached the end of our tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us anytime. I, Norma Juarez Durian, I'm the main contact for Emeritus College, but feel free to talk to one of our other Bradman librarians. We are available Monday through Friday. If you need help during the weekend, librarians are available 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the reference desk, or you can call or email.